and stained glass are traditional glass arts, but New Brunswick is becoming famous in another area of glass art. I'm Emerson Luchford of the Provincial Cable Bureau, and my guest is Della Cody, who is making that glass art possible. Mrs. Cody, will you tell us what your glass art is? This glass is called, or this um, craft is called glass slumping or sagging, both of which, uh, both terms to me sound sort of negative, but you know, uh, I guess this is a hold over my father saying, straightened up and we were all, so slump or sag, uh, which gives you this this effect. I'll go into that in a moment. But many people, to get away from that, call it uh, bent glass, or since it's fired in a kiln, it could be called kiln glass, or uh, glass fusion, because you fuse different colors and glasses together. So uh, this, I guess, say glass is one short word that can describe it. Well, could you tell us how you go about creating slag glass. I could talk about this forever, so uh, <laughs> you cut me off whenever whenever you need to. Uh, because of its, I'll, I'll start, oh, first I should, should show you the basic things I start with. I use this type of glass, which is um, plate glass, ordinary window glass, which is a two mil, or a little thicker, three mil. And depending on what effect I want to get, I choose the type of glass that I need. Uh, glass cutters, I have to use this kind because I have quite a bit of arthritis in my hands and I can hang on, oh, oh sorry, I can hang on to that with uh, both hands. This to cut circles with, uh, this band-aids, <laughs> very essential earlier on in, in my work in this. I don't have quite so many misses now. The colors I use are very finely ground glass so that when the glass is fired, the color melts and goes right into the glass so it's not something imposed on top. It's, a, it's an integral part of the glass itself. Um, these uh, little glass hangings, because of the nature of glass, I can put a pattern on the table and put my glass over it and then draw the pattern. Norman did this design for me of the New Brunswick fiddleheads. And uh, then I just uh, uh, trace around it. This type, I draw, uh, this is again the New Brunswick violet. I draw uh, on one side freehand. I sort of organize the, the spacing. But I draw the design on and then just turn the glass over and trace it out so that uh, you know where you're going to place things and it's easier to erase grease pencil than it is gold. And I use this, uh, I outline the things in, uh, this is a uh, liquid gold. And uh, then I, I puddle <laughs> in the, the colors. When I mix this, this is uh, uh, what the color looks like in, in powder form and mix it with water. Um, then I just, it, it's put on something like watercolor and you can, you can puddle it on, put it rather thick, and the gold holds the color in so it doesn't run all over the place. So that's one type of thing with, with no sagging. This would be fusing, where the colors fuse into the glass. Now when we get into sagging, we'd have something like this. This is laminated, which means two pieces of glass are, uh, one is placed on top of the other, and the color is in between them. And you get all the, uh, uh, bubbles there, this is, you can control where the bubbles go if you want to, but if you don't want to and just have a, a, sort of a, a scattered formation of bubbles, this is the air is uh, um, caught in between. It doesn't have a chance to get out and escape when the glass, when the uh, um, heat expands uh, the, the colors and the, the air inside. If the air could escape and get outside, you wouldn't get any bubbles. But if the air can't escape, and I'm, when I want bubbles, I make sure I do the colors right out to the very edge so I get bubbles. This is placed, it's a, a straight piece of glass, and this is where I use the two mil uh, uh, window glass. And it's, uh, it's just flat glass. I put the colors on, place it on a mold, which is this shape, and heat it, and it sags down into the mold. Now, uh, I'm going to do this one first. This I call storm over the tantramar, because to me it's 
stormy. I don't name very many of them, but this is just for, for fun. Uh, I put the colors on wet and then uh, move them around sort of like this so that you get a flowing of one color into another a little bit. And you, uh, one of the fun things about this glass is I never really know exactly what I'm going to get. With the sag ones, I know more or less, but, but not exactly. Now, with this piece, this has pinkish color and then and that takes one firing I have to, with the luster uh, pieces I need to do two firings at least sometimes more but it's difficult to refire glass because it always needs a lot of uh, visual supervision toward the end uh, it takes me about three hours to do the firing but between our two and two and a half is when it needs a lot of visual supervision. So this gets one firing with the luster. Then I put on the design and this is a, a traditional Russian. I, to me it's, it's sort of peculiar to think of a, of a cross being a Russian design, but, but it is a traditional Russian design. I put the, the design on, I, it's still flat, and then I put it in a mold which is this shape and it slumps down into it. Uh, I brought along um, a sample of a mold. This is this is uh, the the type of thing that a plain piece of glass or decorated piece would be placed on, and on heating it would take on this shape, would slump down into it, and that stuff is uh, that powder is uh, a separator so that the glass does not stick to the mold as it's. Uh, uh, heating. Without this, the glass would uh, go into the small, porous parts of this and, and we'd be stuck. <laughs> I'd, either, I'd have to break the works or, or chuck it. And uh, this is, is very uh, uh, drying on the fingernails. My hands do not look like the hands of a lady <laughs> by any means. But uh, uh, there are some things I guess to me are more important than having nice fingernails. <laughs> it, it's drying, I guess this is it. It, it takes a lot of the, uh, the moisture out of your hands and uh, my nails are very brittle. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about this. Again, it's a luster, completely different color than this. I, but the interesting thing about this one is that different angles you turn it, the light catches it different ways and you get blues and, and reds and, and greens and, and uh, different colors and which to me is sort of fun. This design is, um, um, I call it watercolors, or not watercolors, uh, water lilies. Sort of, I think it's probably a Mesopotamian design. As you can see in doing this uh, I do a fair amount of, of research for designs because I like to use some of the traditional ones. I like some of the Hungarian quilt designs make very nice interesting uh, patterns and the uh, uh, ori oriental cushion designs. <laughs> but you know where it's uh, transparent you can uh, use anything as a design. No! This is my own. I did that. I worked on, one summer Norman was painting and I was working on designs, trying to get different uh, things in. But uh, this, is, this is how uh, I developed these. <laughs> Mrs. Cody, you've made uh, two references to designs, uh, or pardon me, one reference to a design done by Norman, and you referred to Norman being painting. I believe that you're referring to the Canadian watercolor artist Norman Cody. <laughs> That's for sure. Is there a relationship between the two of you? <laughs> yes, of course. He's my husband. <laughs> we have a great time in our family. Um, we have breakfast to get, well, we do our exercises and walking and swimming and that stuff in the morning. Then we have breakfast. He goes up to his studio. I go down to the basement. My workshop's in the basement. And we come up and join for lunch. And uh, this, this uh, has a, he talks about his problems and I talk about mine. <laughs> Mrs. Cody, would you tell us a bit more about how you develop a design and again, how you put it on the glass prior to putting it in the kiln? 
Uh, developing designs is, is very difficult and I don't know, working in glass, whether I prefer working primarily just with colors or with drawing on a design. Now when I, like, like this, I, I get a charge out of this type of thing, just uh, seeing, uh, sometimes I, I mix two colors and just seeing what will come out or the, what I call my slosh. <laughs> the slosh type, this one, where I really, I have some control over what's going to happen, but not definite control, as opposed to this, where I have a very specific design, which um, I draw on with, with the gold. I have a special um, pen that has a little uh, well in it that I put the gold in, and uh, then just draw on on the design, and that has to dry. Uh, I could fire that to make an additional firing, but I, there's, there's really no need to because once it's completely dry, then uh, the gold will hold in the color to a certain extent. But I found when I mix my colors with oil, like this, I can, I can mix it with either oil, and I use baby oil, but you can buy more expensive ones, <laughs> or, or water, that the uh, gold does not hold in the paint. So therefore, I find that, that it's sort of a waste of time and money to, to mix it with gold. I tried it as an experiment, but uh, uh, it's, it's not worth the time. What amount of time do you spend actually making designs? Um, when I'm in my workshop, in, in this type, now we're going to be talking about other types of things later on, but when I'm in my workshop for, for this type of sagging, I don't spend any time uh, uh, developing designs. I have uh, books and books of designs that I use periodically. And there's some I like and some I use once and think, ah, I don't, I don't care for that at all. So the ones I like, I use over and over again. The ones I don't like, um, I just scrap. I have a, uh, fun with these little hangings. Any of my children whose friends have, have babies, this type of thing, I do a little commemorative thing and I put the name of the child and the birth date and, and then they can hang it over the crib as a as a mobile and <laughs> then the youngster will have this as a memento. Our guest is New Brunswick glass artist Della Cody. We'll be back with Mrs. Cody after this public service announcement. Imagine for just pennies a day you can make it possible for a child to have schooling, medical care, and hope. Hello, I'm Dorothy Hamill. You know, I used to wonder how I could help, how I could make a difference to a child. Well, I found one of the best ways. I sponsor a child in a developing country through Foster Parents Plan. You can choose a boy or a girl, the age of the child, and the country where you'd like to help. Think about it. Your spare change can change a child's life and the lives of that child's family. And it doesn't stop there, because by combining your funds with those of other foster parents, whole communities can change by growing more food, digging wells, building decent homes, and feeling good about their lives and what their futures will hold. Please call now. Foster Parents Plan. Because your love does make the difference. Our guest is New Brunswick glass artist Della Cody. Mrs. Cody, when and under what circumstances did you start to become a glass artist? I could go back <laughs> very, very far, but actually we stayed with uh, the Dykemans one summer and uh, looked after the tourists, the visitors, and this type of thing. And uh, I knew this, this sort of solidified in my mind that I wanted to do something with my hands, but I didn't want to be a potter. And um, talking with Erica and uh, we'd yak around and I thought, 
I bet you glass. Well, Erica having, uh, this is Erica Gregg now, uh, having her, the supply of books that she does and dig out all these things on making glass and I couldn't quite picture mixing sand and all this sort of stuff and producing glass. I knew that wasn't it. So uh, as the years went by, I still had this bee in my bonnet. And then when Dr. Kroll, Bill Kroll, was head of the craft council here, uh, he knew my problem and he found something in a craft shop down in the States. So he told me about it and we went down and as I knew I didn't want to blow glass. I knew I didn't want to do stained glass, but I didn't know what I did want to do. And he said, Della, I have found something that you might be interested in. So we went down, Norman and, and Bill's wife and I went down one, one Saturday and went into this little shop. And as soon as I saw it, that's it. I love it. But would he tell me anything about it? No way! So Bill Cole, being the type of person he was, all the way home in the car, we figured out how to go ahead and do it. And we bought a little kiln, Norman and I, just one of these little sample things. And um, I shouldn't say sample, they're uh, copper enamel in kiln. And uh, we got some fire brick, and Norman dug out ducks, shapes of ducks and fish and this type of thing. And Bill had told us we had to have something as a, as a separator so my glass wouldn't stick. And uh, oh, did I get, then I used my band-aids, did I ever, and scrap <laughs> glass. The still, the, the glass recycling people love me because they sure get a haul from me every morning. And. Uh, but I went on from there eventually solving problems. But while I was working, I'd solve a problem and may not be able to, I mean, while I was working, working for money, uh, may not be able to get back at it for two or three months. So then when I retired about eight years ago, then I thought, now I can really concentrate on them. And I do, I work hard. Uh, before we continue, Mrs. Cody, you made a reference to the Dykemans and your mm -hmm. retirement. Yes. Would you tell our viewers who the Dykemans are or were mm -hmm. and what you retired from? Well, Kel and Erica Dykeman, who were uh, uh, really did a great deal with uh, getting uh, pottery established as a craft and not only in New Brunswick but in Canada and possibly uh, North America their their work still to me is very outstanding and uh, uh, Kel died a number of years ago and Erica uh, later married uh, Milton Gregg and uh, she's still a very good friend of ours now my work, I taught at the university um, in the education faculty. And uh, when I retired from that, then I could concentrate on this. I love my work, but since I retired, I'm not tied down to hours, so I can work 12, 14 hours a day if I want to, or I can work two or three or none <laughs> if, I, if the time fits. Mrs. Cody, I'm sure that your uh, uh, craft, your art, is a developing one, and I see you've brought us some other very interesting examples of this. Could you tell us about these pieces, please? Well, I think this is this is maybe one of my problems uh, in when I was teaching, as well as now. I'm never content with what, what has happened. <laughs> I want to see what else I can do. And uh, I find that uh, the Craft Council, the New Brunswick Craft Council, uh, no, it wasn't the Craft Council. Anyway, I, I received money one year to go uh, from the uh, uh, government with help to go take a, a, a course in Toronto. And this is where I learned the uh, gold outlining and that type of thing. But I'm trying now to get a course. Sheridan College in Toronto offered courses this summer. Exactly what I wanted. I want course. I want to really go into glass sculpting, and I don't know how. <laughs> and uh, but they were canceled because not enough people had registered. So I'm still trying to track down people to see if I can go apprentice with them or whatever. But to get into what I'm doing now, um, the. Uh, I was talking before about slumping pieces of glass down into a mold. Now these ones, instead of sagging into a mold, I sag over a mold. So this is what, I have a thing up there and uh, the, uh, the heat of the glass, when, when the glass is heat it becomes molten. Uh, did I explain that before? Anyway, it softens 
and will flow down over. Now this is where, with this type, I need a great deal of visual supervision because if it goes down too far, it uh, goes right into the mold and I can't get it out and, and it's an awful mess. So uh, I, between the two hours and two and a half hours, it needs a lot of visual. I just have to open my kiln and look and see what's happening. It may not become a drip. No, it's a drape. <laughs> it's a drape. <laughs> but it could become a drip, that's for sure. But uh, so this is how this one developed. And then when it turns over, it comes like that. And to me, this is a beautiful bowl for coleslaw or something like that, especially if you have the little bits of, of carrot or uh, red peppers or things. And uh, I, I don't know what these lights give, but at night, the just the lights on it I have give beautiful effects of, of light shining. It's just, it is very, very lovely. And uh, anyway, that's uh, that's one type. Now that has the uh, um, luster on, and I do one firing flat, and then I put the design on, and these are little daisy type things. I guess daisies is as good as any. <laughs> the leaves look like, like poppies, but the, the flowers don't. And, but I wanted something that, that, see when it's flat, it's hard to tell what's going to happen when it goes down, but I wanted something that I could go in and now around the, the circle uh, so that hopefully it would flow down, which it did. You see, it comes down there and goes up. And so. But uh, but these ones, with, with the sag down into a mold, I could more or less know what was going to happen. But these, I haven't a clue. I haven't an idea what's going to happen. Um, this is um, another type. And the, the interesting thing that I find about this, it's the one color that was put on, but look what happens. Completely different colors, inside and out. Now this started in as a sort of a, a free-form triangle, but I found by trying the, the three uh, things under it that using a circle you get almost the same same result. So I don't know whether it's worth the hassle of, it's easier to cut a circle than it is a free-form thing that you have to do around corners and so on. But when, I suppose, I don't know, I guess the different colors. Maybe the heat, you see, when it's up like this, this is going to get a different um, heat degree, you know, maybe just this, this much, but it's going to be a little bit different than that would be because this is sheltered, it's underneath. And uh, uh, maybe that's what the reaction on the colors, I, I don't know, but I find it rather interesting. Um, Do you ever expect to be able to solve the problem as to why it happened? I, to me, it isn't a problem. I find it a, oh, an it's interesting a, it's happening. A phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I find yes, it very I, interesting. I, I, I'm not going to waste time <laughs> trying to solve solve things like that that don't that don't uh, bother me. Um, this this is my pride and joy. I like this very much, <laughs> and it is again a different technique. Instead of going down over one thing or going down over several things where you have different different levels of uh, um, s a sagging. This goes down in like water going down a drain <laughs> and uh, it's it's placed I, I have to raise the uh, uh, support I guess is what you'd call it. I put this up on a thing and the glass when it's molten goes down in and and flattens out on the uh, kiln shelf and gives you that little base. It could go like that too and you can use this for uh, um, oh candies or nuts or something but it wasn't intended but it's not bad like that but uh, I like it this way. That's what you call ambidextrous, good on either side, eh? Yes, I guess so. And another interesting thing about this, while well, I put both the red and blue colors on, when, oh, that's another point I wanted to make. This stretches. The, the ones that sag down in sort of contract and they become um, more solid. But 
this is uh, using the, uh, the plate glass, and it stretches. Now, I could not, I, I haven't tried this yet. You were saying it's a developing. I'm always trying something new. I haven't tried this type of thing yet, using the laminated glass. You know, using two, two layers of the thin glass. But that's one of my next projects, probably uh, tomorrow or next day, because uh, it's been in my mind for several days now I want to try it. But the reason I started with the heavy plate glass was that I knew it stretched down over, and this was going to flow. And I didn't want it to flow so much that it would become thin and brittle. And that's where the problem in this comes, because as it flows down, this uh, part of it is much thinner than up here. You can just tell the feel, feel underneath there. It's uh, not the stem part, but this part. Yes. See, you, you can tell it's, it's much thinner. And uh, when I was reaching this stage again the glass people really profited I'd try have to try different heights and if it went too long a drop it would become very very thin like um, Christmas tree ornaments that brittle you know the least little ping on it and, and bang you'd lost it uh, alternatively if this hole is too big here with with the support it becomes a, a bowl which again is, a, is another thing and I, I do that sometimes intentionally but what I've been working to try to get is this type of thing followed by this type which I just took out of the kiln this morning and uh, I really haven't solved a lot of the problems. But what happened in this? Okay, I had one thing down here with a piece of glass on it, and that glass went down here. I had another thing up here with another piece of glass on it that had a hole in it. So this would go down in the and fasten on, you see? So it makes an, well this, did they used to have a, two ended egg cups so that you could put your, your egg on one side. Well, this is the same idea, except you couldn't quite have an egg in that. Um, it's almost impossible to center. I made little marks with uh, grease pencil so I could get one centered over the other, but if I put any color on at all, it's difficult, it's impossible to see through. That's why this is so pale. It uh, was quite a, a bright color when I painted it on, but I put it on so thick. But this could be a rather interesting development. You know, it could hold candles or, well, it's not, that's comfortable enough to drink out of, it, but uh, you might lose some. Would be one of those good trick glasses where you trickle out. <laughs> and so, although you're well along, Mrs. Cody, in your glass art, you are still looking forward to new developments. Oh, for sure, yes. The next next thing will be sculpture, and I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. See, with with this type, the flowing. Free flow actually is what happens because I have no control how it's going to go, and but I don't stand and hold a piece of glass in the in the kiln and, and sort of let it flow. But I'm sure there are ways to get a little more control than I have so far. Our guest has been New Brunswick glass artist Della Cody. I'm Emerson Luchford of the Provincial Cable Bureau, reporting from the legislature.